now. There we go, a few more people in. Right then. Okay, we'll make a start. I think I've got everybody in now. Okay, we would have loved to have done this um, event in person, unfortunately, with the current circumstances, we're doing it online, but I hope that I can answer any questions and give you lots of information um, throughout this presentation. So, I'm Miss Ball, I teach technology. Um, you'll find technology when you start at Romarsh, you'll find it down by the maths block, and every morning we will have tutor in my workshop, so it's quite an interesting classroom. Um, you'll get to know the workshop, I, I think it's the most fun place in school to be. Um, and my email address is there. If you want to jot that down, um, it's rball at rowmarsh.org. If you have any queries whatsoever, any questions, do feel free to email me um, and I'll do my best to reply as soon as possible. Um, I've been working a bit of background on me. I've been working at Royal Marsh now for six years, um, going into my seventh year in September. And I'm looking forward to having another year seven tutor. Um, I've seen a year seven tutor group through to year 11 um, came back from maternity leave and picked up a year 10 and now I'm coming back to year 7 again which is lovely so I'm really looking forward to seeing you all and um, starting in September so um, our form group so this will be your form group when you start year 7 in September you won't however stay in this form group for very long um, as soon as we have enough information so that is based on um, attendance effort punctuality behavior amongst um, many other things um, we will rearrange you into different tutor groups. So don't get too hung up about what tutor groups you're in right now. Um, when we've collected that relevant information, we will be shuffling you all around. So in terms of the school day, um, in lessons, you'll be able to mix with lots of other friends from your primary and make loads of new friends. So we tend to take um, groups from every tutor group and put those together and those make uh, your classes. So your tutor group is not the class that you will be with every single day. That said, on the first two days, you will stay with your tutor group just while you get to know the school. But after those two days, you will start your normal timetable. So you'll receive your timetable on your first day. Uh, that is a timetable for the day down the left-hand side. Um, form period, tutor period, will usually only be, after those first two days of inset, um, those the rest of the time you will be in tutor for 20 minutes in a morning that's 20 to 9 till 9 o'clock after that you won't be with your tutor group anymore you'll be mixed into different classes some of them set so your english and your math classes amongst some others will be set into um into certain classes others will be mixed so mixed set so you won't be with the same people every day so that's your um timetable for the day down the left hand side there as you'll see, which I always know, break time isn't till 20 to 12. So make sure you've had a decent breakfast because if you're anything like me, you're getting pretty peckish by the time it gets to period two. So break time is at 20 to 12. That's your first break of the day. So in your form tutor groups, uh, a warning bell will ring at 8.40. That means you need to start moving to your form groups. You must be in your tutor room before the second bell, which goes at 8.45. Okay. So the register will be taken in tutor at 8.45. If you come in after that bell has gone, you will be late. So one morning per week even, you will have an assembly. That will be with Mr. Bartle because he is your head of year. He will deliver your assemblies once a week. Form time activities include quizzes, uh, themed learning activities, reviews of effort and attendance, um, as well as your CFPs, which are calls for praise and CFCs, which are cause for concern. So I know that we'll have loads of cause for praise. We'll have loads of those. And I hope that we don't have to receive any CFCs. So your uniform policy. Um, you need black tailored trousers or any length skirt with the Wittersley Partnership Trust logo displayed on that piece of uniform. Um, a white shirt and a clip-on school tie. The black v-neck jumper or a cardigan, depending on which one you prefer, again, with the Wickersley Partnership Trust logo displayed on the sleeve. Um, 
I'm informed they can be purchased from uh, Pinders, I think it is. And they're open again for you to go and try on um, uniform. We're recommended that you try it because the sizes can vary a little bit. Um, so if you try them on, you'll know for definite um, which one's going to be appropriate for you. So your PE kit, um, shorts or leggings or tracksuit bottoms with uh, the logo on, a T-shirt with the logo on, a hoodie. If you prefer a hoodie, you can wear a hoodie as well uh, with black socks and trainers. So as you can see there, the images of your PE kit. Uh, footwear, so footwear is always a, always a fun one. Um, those images there show you the acceptable footwear, okay? They must be leather. It's as simple as that. They must be leather. So what tends to be the most popular is kind of the middle there, the top middle, um, and the bottom middle, the girls tend to wear those as well. And um, the top right-hand side are probably the only trainer that I've seen so far, which is black and completely leather okay can't have loads of stripes on can't have big uh, colorful logos on again as you can see by those trainers on the top right hand side they do have a logo but it's black leather so that's absolutely fine um as you can see there those are what will not be permitted so we're making this very very clear so if any of those do arrive in september anything with big logos and stripes on anything that isn't leather because if they're not leather they don't stay looking like that for very long um not plain black so those have loads of buckles on we can't have that again the last two are not leather again fabric shoes they're not going to last very long and the plastic logo shoes which are apparently really expensive so i don't really know why i'd want to wear those for school um, but those are not allowed as school footwear so please make sure you're not trying to con your parents into buying something that's not allowed because they'll be really annoyed um when you're not allowed to wear them for school so remember black leather um, is uniform policy. So uh, uniform policy again, makeup should be discreet and minimal. No false eyelashes or false nails. Um, especially when you're doing things like technology, you're going to be getting your hands dirty, guys. You're not going to be wanting any false nails on. Um, extreme haircuts are not allowed. Jewelry must be kept to a minimum, so no more than one small earring, uh, sleeper, or stud in each ear. Facial piercings are not allowed on school sites, so that's anything from a nose stud, eyebrow, I don't think that's still a thing, eyebrow, um, and like you see there, tongue studs, absolutely not, um, not allowed. Gold, silver and bronze pin badges are allowed to be worn and should be worn as part of your school uniform on your tie. So when we start to do awards and assemblies, anyone who has achieved 100% attendance, has had zero late. Uh, is top of the effort ranking so you've been trying your hard every single day never giving less than your best you will be awarded um a gold silver or bronze pin badge and that is to be worn on your time so you can be super proud of what you've done and show everybody your achievements so in the canteen um that is a picture of the cafeteria that looks quite dark actually it doesn't look that dark usually um new year seven students will go to lunch 10 minutes early so you can imagine it becomes quite busy in that canteen especially at first break because everybody's really hungry um for the first couple of weeks we usually do it for rollover obviously we've unfortunately not had rollover um however for the for the time being for the beginning um year seven students will go to lunch 10 minutes early so that you can work out how the calf works get used to the new routine and not have the rest of the school uh, bombarding in all at the same time. So you will have an account to purchase food. No cash is taken over the tills at the canteen desk because it will just take a very, very long time. We will be setting up those accounts on your first day in school. So that will be used through parent pay. So parent pay can be accessed online. So parents can access it online and letters will be going out with your logon details for that um, to parents in September. So this is for your child's school account for their food. If you'd prefer to send your child with cash, that's absolutely fine. Um, there are points, cash points available in the school where um, you'll type in your little number on that keypad there. It will come up with your account and you can deposit cash into that machine 
um, it can be notes, it can be coins, and that will top up your account. So you'll top it up before school, and then when you go to pay for your food, um, you won't need to use any cash. You'll just go straight through, putting your thumbprint on the scanner or putting your number in, and you will be able to pay a lot quicker. So that's how we're going to pay for food in the canteen. So on the menu, um, there is breakfast available in the canteen before school. Uh, with sausage and bacon sandwiches, uh, tea cakes, toast, tea and coffee and hot chocolate and orange juice is available. There are snacks available as well, um, home bakes, which are absolutely to die for, which I do try and avoid the calf because I just buy too many. Uh, the home bakes are beautiful. And for lunch, there are a mixture of hot and cold choices. So you can have jacket potatoes, burgers, sandwiches, pizza slices, pasta. Um, main meals are things like fish and chips, curry, pie, meat and veg pie. There's also uh, warm pasta tubs as well, which are really nice with um, a tomato sauce on or something like that. And a meal deal, which tends to be the most popular, is a sandwich, a drink and a snack for £2.15. So those are the kind of things that will be on the menu when you arrive. So being equipped to learn, it's really, really important. And it's something that I will be stressing a lot in our tutor is for you to be equipped to learn. I will expect you to arrive every single day with two pens, two pencils, a ruler, a sharpener and a rubber. Two pens, why? Because if one breaks, you've got another one for later on in the day. Same goes for the pencil, or if you lose one, you have got another one. So what I like to do in my future is you'll all sit down in the morning and you will get in a routine of taking out your equipment. And then when I do the register, you will answer the register by saying here, here miss, morning miss, and holding up your equipment. So I can see you've got that equipment. You don't want to be getting trouble all day. You don't want people on your back for not having equipment. So just make sure you bring it every day and you are then equipped to learn. So in design technology in uh, our department, during Key Stage 3, you'll be asked for a voluntary contribution towards the resources that we use. So this ensures that we provide all the students with everything they will need throughout the year. So in technology, we do a few rotations. We do, uh, students will spend time studying food technology, resistant materials, which is currently a woodworking project, a textiles-based project and a graphics-based project. Uh, we'll also be doing at some point a STEAM-based project, which is an engineering, science, maths and art project. You will not be asked to send your students in, send your kids in with anything. We provide everything. So when they enter food technology, we will not ask you to bring in ingredients. It's very stressful for you to have to do that. Every year we have kids, before we provided everything, we'd have kids telling parents the night before, even on the morning, some would say, oh, but mom, I need, I need this and I need that for food today. And it was just too stressful for parents. So what we've done is we are providing all ingredients and all materials and we are asking for a voluntary contribution to be made towards that. So um, this will appear on your parent pay. So when you get your login for parent pay, it will appear on there usually around £10 for the whole year. So that's including all the food, all the resistant materials, all the textiles, everything um, is included in that £10. Um, an apron is to be worn in DT, part of our health and safety. Um, we do provide them, or students can bring their own, we don't mind. Um, something we use in school is SAM Learning, okay? All students will have an account set up in September for SAM Learning. Um, many subjects set homework through SAM Learning. This is somewhere where you can log on online um, and there are fun, really fun um, subject based tasks through SAM Learning and it's marked through there and the kids can see then how many and the teachers can see how many tasks you've completed. Parents can log on and have a look what tasks kids are completing and if they're keeping up with the homework, which is nice. So that's some learning. You'll be introduced to that in September. So mobile phones. Love mobile phones, stickler for phones. Phones are allowed in school. However, they are only allowed when teachers have given permission to use them. So as a learning tool. So I might say, um, could you quickly team up with someone who's got a phone? If you haven't got your own, doesn't really matter. Um, and can you find out a name of a softwood? 
for example. And you might use that as a learning tool. Do a quick bit of research, find the answer, put your phone away. At break times, you can use your phone, but only while you're in your form rooms. So tutor rooms are open through break time and you can use your phones in there. You're not to walk down the corridor using your phones, but you can use them in your tutor room. And you can use your phone for recording homework. So what I could like to get people to do sometimes is take a picture of the board or write in the calendar when the phone, when the uh, homework has to be in. Um, that's really useful. Um, however, if your phone is visible on the corridors or during lesson time without permission, that's including it being in your pocket. So if I see a phone in someone's pocket while they're in my lesson, I will take that. I'll take the phone. I'll confiscate it because it shouldn't be in your pocket, it should be in your bag, um, and it should be switched off unless you're told you can use it. So if it is visible during the corridors or lesson time, it will be confiscated until the end of the school day, and then you'll get a detention. All right, so I know that none of you are going to do anything silly like that, but if you do want to bring your phone, do ensure it's in your bag. So uh, behaviour, we operate a same-day detention system, okay? so that all instances of unacceptable behaviour are dealt with promptly. What we really found was um, if a student had a detention, had done something wrong and had a detention on the Monday, um, or did something wrong on Monday but didn't have a detention until Thursday, it kind of lost all impact. Students forgot why they were in detention, teachers were trying to chase people up. So what we do now is a same-day detention system. So a pastoral detention or things such as a detention for being late, uh, that is between 10 past three and half past three. Um, a faculty de detention, that's something you might get for not doing your homework or disrupting a lesson. Um, that's faculty detention. That will be between 10 past three and half past three. And a sanction room detention is where on the, I'm sure none of you will experience it, but on the off chance that you really do misbehave in a lesson and a teacher sends you to the sanction room, you will have a detention between 10 past three and four o'clock, okay? That will happen on the same day, okay? Um, we do that so that we can have a restorative meeting with that teacher. So whilst you are in detention, your teacher will come up and see you. And if you ask any of my old tutor group, I will also come up and see you and I will find you and, and get you to explain to me why you are there. Um, your teacher will come up and have a conversation with you and make sure that it's an absolute fresh start from the next lesson. So it's really in your interest, if you do end up with a detention, that you must attend it that same day. So on a brighter note, rewards. So we have loads of different rewards on offer at Royal Marsh. Calls for praise, so you can get these in lessons for doing uh, outstanding pieces of work, producing outstanding pieces of homework, trying your hardest all the time throughout that lesson, throughout a unit or a period of time. Um, Going over and above, helping out teachers, helping out your peers, um, you can gain CFPs for that. Praise points again through your effort and behaviour, again over a period of time. Um, the top boy and top girl will be presented with a golden tie so that everyone in the school and in the year group knows who their top boy and top girl are. We have one of those per year group. Uh, we have the golden book presentations, so if your book gets backed in golden paper, that's showing that you have shown high levels of presentation in your work. Um, very, very neat. Um, effort ranking. So throughout your time at Royal Marsh, we will rank you on effort. And I will say, yes, I think that person's tried their hardest. They have excellent effort. Or they might be coasting or a little bit lower. So the effort ranking is another reward where if you are effort rank number one, which we are all aiming to be, if you are effort rank number one, that means you have tried your hardest in every single lesson, okay? And that's what we're all aiming for. We give out lots of these awards in awards assemblies for 100% attendance. Um, the golden ticket for attendance is really exciting. So um, there's a picture there of someone, I think, gaining their golden ticket for attendance. Sometimes these are prize draws, so they might be a 10 pound prize draw for everybody who's got 100% attendance and you will be put into a prize draw. And if you get the golden ticket for your attendance, you'll win a 10 pound voucher or £10 in cash. Um, curriculum awards, so you'll be awarded for um, the highest achiever or the highest in effort in all your subjects. I've talked about the gold, silver and bronze awards, those give you the pin badge. And a new thing we've brought in is leadership lunch. So if we feel as form tutors 
that our students have shown um, ex excellent leadership skills, may have guided an activity, may have helped their peers. Uh, we can put them into leadership lunch where they will go in and have a free lunch in the cafeteria with all the other students who have been awarded leadership lunch and members of SLT will go in and enjoy and congratulate them for that. So that's great. Free lunch, let's face it, that's really good. So they are our rewards. Um, so how do you get rewarded? So remember, to get your hands on these rewards, we need to see excellent effort, attendance, and a can-do attitude, okay? Being really positive and making sure that you are trying your best all the time. Doing it the Royal Marsh way. So we will live by the Royal Marsh way. It just links into everything believing in yourself, taking responsibility for your actions, dreaming big, proud of our achievements, all of those things on there on the Royal Marsh Way, we will live by from the day you start. So we've brought in something new that's been brought into school is the Royal Marsh Pledge. And this has been put in place to make students feel and to show how much you are achieving, okay? Now the Royal Marsh Pledge incorporates all 12 statements of the Royal Marsh Way. So the Royal Marsh Pledge represents a hierarchy of tasks and challenges that you can work through and achieve bronze, silver and gold for each aspect. So our aim in year seven should be to get through as many of these bronze pledges as we can and really take on this challenge. OK, so it's a lot there. I'm not expecting, obviously, for us to be able to read all that. However, our key stage three pledges, I'll pick one out here. Learn a new skill. OK, that is a bronze pledge that we are pledging to you and you are pledging to us that you are going to try and learn a new skill. Another one could be to analyse a mistake you've made. So we might discuss in tutor your first week and analyse any mistakes you might have made and let you reflect on those. That's not a negative thing. That's something we want you to learn to do so that you can reflect on it and you can improve later on. Now. An area of the pledge that we are wanting you to pick up on now is learning a new skill. So this is your challenge, if you choose to accept it. This is your challenge, your bronze challenge for your active citizenship Raw Marsh pledge. You could gain a pledge before you've even started. So before we return in September, can you complete the challenge of learning a new skill? You'll need to provide some evidence for it. So I don't want you coming back and saying, oh, well, miss, I did it. You just didn't see me. Well, I don't care. OK, you've got to provide some photo or video evidence or a diary demonstration, something like that. You'll be able to share this with your tutor group and the rest of your tutors when we all arrive back in September. I can safely say and you can hold me to it. I've learned to juggle in uh, lockdown. I've learned to juggle. My daughter thinks it's hilarious. I can only do it for about five seconds, but it's a new skill. So I look forward to coming back and seeing all your new skills, if you accept this challenge, in September. So Mr Bartle, I'm sure, will be sending out more pledges and more challenges that you can complete in these coming weeks. But that is your first challenge, OK, learning a new skill. So we have a scheme at Raw Marsh called the Chromebook Scheme. Now, Chromebooks, it's, if you don't know what one is, it's like a mini laptop. There's a picture of one there small laptop, a uh, Google-based laptop. And we have Chromebooks in school that uh, teachers can book out for lessons if we want to use them for research or producing a piece of work. Now, you can, if you wish, uh, purchase your own Chromebook, and they can be available on the pricing list you can see on the left-hand side there. Um, the portal will open on the 10th of August, okay, to... See if you would like a Chromebook if you want to opt into that scheme. There is an email address there if you want to note that down, which is chromebooks at rawmarsh.org. So if you have any questions at all about the Chromebooks, uh, there's someone on the other end of that email that will be able to answer your questions. This is absolutely optional. This is not an expected thing at all. It's an option if you want to purchase a Chromebook, which all oh, great if you haven't got a laptop um, or anything just yet. It's a great scheme so that um, the students can do homework and um, Google Classroom and their emails and things while they're at home as well as at school. So we put out on our social media um, any student questions. So a year six transition was to ask a student. So getting a student perspective. I can give you lots of answers to questions. 
but there might be some honest answers that you want to ask other students. So do you have any questions that you would like to ask our year seven students? So these questions can be anything, ranging from what do they think about transition? What do they think about school, their lessons, their teachers? What do they think about after school clubs? Whatever you can think of, okay? All these questions will be answered directly by other students, not by staff, okay? So this is something that um, the head of year seven, Miss Merchant, is gonna work on as well, is getting those questions to her year seven students and those re them replying to you. So if you complete the form on the website with your questions or email them to the contacts that I'm gonna show you on the next page, um, we will endeavor to get you an answer from our year seven students. So look out for the follow-up video that they're gonna compile to create all your answers. So any questions, if you can, please email um, any of the below uh, sites. So that is Mr. Bartle, he's the head of year seven. His email address is there, jbartle at Um Our transition coordinator, you may have met uh, Miss Tomlinson before. Her email address is there. She may have been showing you around school earlier on in the year. She may have been popping into your primary schools. Um, but if you have any questions about transition, um, Miss Tomlinson's email is there. Um, there is also a Google form, so visit the website for further information. Please complete the Google form, which is on our website, uh, which has contact details on it. So if anybody's had any questions throughout, um, I'll just have a look now at any questions that may have come up in the chat. Uh, I haven't got any just yet. I'll stay on. Um, I'll stay online for another 10 minutes. If anybody has any questions they'd want to put in the chat, feel free to pop them in there and I'll answer it as best as I can. Okay, but it's been lovely to even see you through the screen, um, to see you all and meet you all. Um, I really hope that you're ready to start in September. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to getting back to school because I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite bored now. I feel like I need to just get back, get involved. Um, so, yeah, lovely to meet you. Lovely to see you. If you wish to email me instead, feel free to email me. That's fine. My email address is rball at rawmarsh.org. So thanks, guys. I'm here to answer any questions if you need me to. But lovely to see you, and I'll see you in September. See you later. Yeah.